successful couple of tournaments here. And then uh, Justin, of course, not to be um, outclassed as well, may have the age and experience um, difference here, but also I believe has his um, ticket to Hawaii as of this moment as well as Canada's top ranking senior. So this one should be fireworks. Yeah, this one should be very, very exciting indeed. And let's go over these teams. We'll start with Justin first here. It's a relatively uh, effective team here that he has on display. Of course, we have the usual heavy hitters that we've seen. We have Rapid Strike Urshifu. We have Incineroar with the Fake Out. And we have the Amoongus. We have the Raging Bolt. But the new additions we've been seeing in the meta are, has to be this Pelipper and the Calyrex. And this is going to be the Shadow Rider Calyrex running that Astral Ball Barrage going for the special attacks. And then you have that Pelipper for that wide guard to try and counteract your opponent's Calyrex. And here we go. It's going to be an Ice Rider Calyrex, so we have a little bit of a duel going on here. All right, Fast Pony versus Slow Pony. Let's see how this goes, because, of course, looking at Brantley's team here, this one is meant to be revolving around Trick Room, wanting to switch the dimensions around and allow for that Ice-type uh, Calyrex to strike first. But... We'll have to see as we start getting things set up here. The Ndidi and the Calyrex Ice is going to be the start here for Bransley. Meanwhile, Justin, Incineroar, and Shadow Calyrex. Intimidate, not going to work because of that clear amulet. Mm. And now with the Psychic Terrain up, that fake out pressure from Justin isn't going to be doing all too much now. We're seeing a Terra Electric be committed here, which is an interesting choice. It's going we out on that Calyrex, I believe. Yeah, that is not necessarily a common one. I feel like we see for Calyrex Ice, just looking to go directly for game attack. Unfortunately, you not quite see what they selected here. But with that Psychic Terrain up, it is going to mean that this Incineroar cannot go for the fake out. It is going to be blocked. And to follow me now, granted, if uh, it's going to be the, the setup actually here for Justin, so wisely actually taking a turn, get this Calyrex Shadow Rider, just go for tons of damage. I like the Will O Wisp, that was the right idea, but the follow me from Brantley is going to make it go to the Indeedee. Indeedee does not care about its attack being lowered. Meanwhile, Calyrex gets the freest trick room it could possibly get here, and now you can expect that uh, Brantley's going to be coming on swinging in just a second. Exactly, and now without a Focus Sash, this enemy Calyrex has to be very careful. This is going to be very disastrous, or maybe even this Incineroar here, now getting threatened with the high horsepower with Helping Hand. This is going to hurt. All right, there it is, ready to help Calyrex. Let's see, this is assuredly a one-shot, but no, the Incineroar manages to live at one HP, oh. and that's not a Sash, that's just pure luck. Okay, so... Granted, this Incineroar is probably going to go down in just a second, but by all means, it's basically got its job done. Here comes the Astro Barrage. Of course, Ndidi does not care as it is a normal type, but this damage going into the Calyrex is going to take it down to just about a quarter, and that burn on top of it is going to really put the hurt here on for Brantley's Calyrex Ice. He needs to get one good shot here to maybe try to do something about this Calyrex Shadow, put some damage on it. Otherwise, that's a Terrestrialization gone and other... Just you're restricted, taken off the table so, so early in this fight. Yeah, a beautiful move by Justin, just staying committed to the game plan and weathering all this damage. Wow. But now with the burn, that Lance isn't going to do all too much to Justin. Okay, so at least we get the Incineroar off the table, but you need the plus one, but again, you're still burnt. So that's just so disheartening here for Brantley here as we now get another setup. Honestly, good on Justin here to not just immediately go to the swing. Neither of these Pokemon are going to take you down this time by. Why not add another set of boosts to your attack? And now that's uh, going to be a plus four special attack Calyrex Shadow here alongside the Pelipper as well. So no Glacial Lance or rather the threat of there being a denial of that Glacial Lance with that Pelipper's wide guard. Yeah, things are looking really good for Justin. The double buff on the Calyrex is looking to be absolutely lethal here. He's seeing some swap outs on the side of Brantley, which is a good call, because right now, some of those mods are sitting ducks. Okay, so Torko's gonna come on out to play here and completely override the weather, bringing it on over to the sun. And there is that wide guard. So any move that's multi-targeting gets completely blocked for both sides. Glacial Lance targets both 
Pokemon, and that is going to be blocked. No damage done to either member on Justin's side. That's just the strength of Wide Earth. So we're seeing on so many teams going for the draining kiss. Going to recoup a little bit of health there. Keep this boosted Galarix still even healthier. And that burn slowly chipping down the Ice Rider. It only has one more turn left in this game. And honestly, just such wise play coming out here from Justin. Again, just essentially ignoring this uh, this Calyrex on Brantley's side. That Protect actually missing was a little bit unusual, but I guess Wide Guard going into Protect does not necessarily work. That is going to be the Protect, though, onto the Calyrex. So this uh, Heat Wave coming out here. And then miss wow. on top of that. You've got to be kidding me here. It's just going to be the Glacial Lance now coming on out here from Brantley's Calyrex Ice is going to go into the Pelipper. Of course, it is just a neutral hit. And to be honest, fair <laughs> amount of damage here. But that Pelipper still lives, and the burn is finally going to make the Calyrex Ice tap out. It's crazy that even through burn, one boost just takes it all the way to half health on that Pelipper. The Glacial Lance is such a strong move. Now, Brantley, though, down to his last two po or last three Pokemon here. Going to swap back out into the Ndidi and get that Psychic Terrain back up. All right, so you got the Terrain Control and the Weather Control into your favor, but now the speed is completely gone. This Calyrex Shadow Rider on Justin's side is going to be able to absolutely run through this squad if they use the great right move here. The Draining Kiss actually going into the Ndidi. Even plus four is not going to be able to take it out. So this could allow for this Ndidi to live as long as it can surprise or survive whatever Pelipper dishes out. That is going to be a Fire Weather Ball. It is gone. No Trick Room for you this time. Bye. Ndidi's gone. And now down to that last one, the Hatterian Torkoal. They're going to use a Heat Wave and wow, in the sun. That does so much damage. It takes out the Pelipper. Okay, so at least take it out the Pelipper here. It is all going to be down. I guess your ace in this situation is going to be the Hatterene. And honestly, going up against an Urshifu may not necessarily be the worst case scenario. That is the water variant and not the dark. So Hatterene not sitting in too terrible of a position. But still, you are outsped. You need to find maybe some way of controlling the speed. Hatterene could, of course, use Trick Room in their own rights. But we're not going to see that just yet, as we are going to see the Terrestrialization onto the Urshifu getting rid of that fighting type and just going to go strictly for the pure water. They're going to go for the full committal. They want this Torkoal gone. The protect comes through for Hatterene. But where did these attacks land for Justin? There's a surging strikes being committed on to the Torkoal. And wow, even with the crit, even with the Terra boost. The sun, though. The sun is negating a lot of this damage. And Torkoal wow. lives at 2 HP. Major, major play here for Brantley. That Sun, of course, having the damage from those water moves. But can he survive this? No, you're not going to be able to. That is 100% accurate. But still, solid job from that Torkoal to be able to survive as long as it did. But now it is going to be Urshifu and Calyrex Shadow versus the Hatterene. And this is... This Calyrex has to be at plus five special attack at this point here. This is going to hurt. And Hatterene is not a fast Pokemon. It is not going to be striking first here. It should be all she wrote here for this Hatterene. Yeah, this should be it. The Surging Strike's just making this an assured feint here, doing a good amount of damage. But you can just see how strong that sun is against these water moves, making them just a hit Here's like a, a wet noodle. But you know, it's not going to hit like a wet noodle. This Astral Barrage. That'll do it. <laughs> plus a five, taking out the Hatterene, securing Justin the first one in the set. All right, so lots of strong plays here from Justin, able to go for those Will-O-Wisp early to completely crunch down on the attack power of Brantley's Calyrex Ice, and was just a fantastic job of maintaining and controlling that situation. We, like, let's be honest, we've been seeing a ton of Calyrex Ice across all divisions throughout this entire weekend. So a big part of your team building process has to be like, how are you going to handle this? Some people just strictly try to outspeed it and stop Trick Room. But I like what Justin is doing here, knowing that there are so many variables, so many ways that you can actually get Trick Room up. Who cares if you move first if you do like a wet noodle for damage? So using that Willow Wisp, getting that burn was just very, very wise. Yeah, really amazing play from Justin and Brantley. They both played very well. Brantley had kind of the odds stacked against him there in the first little bit of mm. that match. 
but Justin <laughs> Brantley managed to pivot it, take it back, take out a few mons, and Justin just stayed in control that whole time. That Calyrex, you cannot let it get that strong at that point, because even Draining Kiss was doing really solid damage. Yeah, that thing does like absolutely nothing for damage, but yet it still just did it, like half a chunk after it being so boosted up. But now the start for game number two. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Here for just inside of things. It's in our Calyrex. Shadow going to be enjoying the field. And Edie's going to make a return here for Brantley, but Hattery is going to take center stage to start this one off. Yeah, that gets the special defense boost from Psychic Seed, making it just a little bit tankier. Attack's going to fall from Intimidate. Not going to matter all too much, but I would say Justin's in a little bit of a better position here. Sure, this Hatterene, if it terrors, it can maybe get a little bit better defensive position, but it's just trying to buy time as Justin maybe goes for a setup here. I mean, I like this here from Brantley. Going to be... One, you have to have the mind game of which of these Pokemon is actually going to fire off the Trick Room. They both could do it. But choosing to use the Ndidi, this means that if the Calyrex Shadow is going to fire off Astral Barrage, it does not care. It doesn't affect Ndidi in the slightest, which means you're going to be relying on your Incineroar to somehow shut this down. Incineroar is not... Even if you build this thing for damage, it does not one-shot unless it gets a crit. And just like that, that is going to be Trick Room set up in Brantley's in speed control. Yeah, now he's in the position of speed. It's all up to this Hattering, though, to try and dish out the damage when it really doesn't have anything that great here. It has Dazzling Gleam. It's going to do decent damage, but it's not going to be enough to take anything out here. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like, nothing is really set up here on Brantley's side. That indeed he hanging on by a thread. One HP and a dream, little Dazzling Gleam as well. Do a little bit of extra trip damage, but here comes that Astral Barrage here from Justin Sh uh, Calyrex Shadow. It's the Hatterene that I'm worried about, and that's exactly what I was scared of. Super effective hit onto the Hatterene, gonna cause it to faint and knock off the field. And that Grimnay, of course, just that much more terrifying as this goes along. And actually, Brantley didn't opt to bring the Calyrex Ice at all, which is kind of intriguing. Interesting, doesn't want to go with the matchup here. And now with the Torkoal out, it's going to be very interesting first turn here, going for the Eruption in Sun. Or was that a Heat Wave I saw? I mean, you're full health at this point. You might as well try the Eruption. And it is going to be the Terrestrialization here. On to Torkoal. Boost that thing even further. We are going to have an absolute bombshell dropped on this field if this Torkoal can go first. Helping, Helping hand. hand on top of this. We're going for broke. Let's see how much damage this can do. Oh. Fantastic protect here, though, from Justin on the Calyrex Shadow, but still this means Incineroar, while maybe a fire type, it is still going to be absorbing a ton of damage. It's already a hurt. This should potent could potentially take it out right here. Let's see, and it does. Not very effective. Effective, but effective enough to take out Incineroar. Now, granted, the good thing here for Brantley is that the Trick Room is still up. So sure, Justin did protect once, but this is where the trouble actually is going to happen. So in a worst case scenario, Eruption still goes off. Now you're getting nerfed by the rain, but Eruption does get stopped by Wide Guard. So now, um, in theory, Brantley has to either play the mind game of whether Wide Guard's actually going to come out or not and fire Eruption through it anyway, or you're gonna have to switch to a single target move here, which if I'm looking at this correctly, I think he's running specs on this thing, which is gonna make it impossible. Yeah, he, he's running choice specs, so he has to switch out if he wanted to change his move. We get the swap out, go into the Gallade, which is a risky choice, especially when that Astral Barrage is being threatened. The Wide Guard comes out. That means this horse is not protecting. It's gonna do something this turn. Choice is, is it a setup or is this that bombshell of an Astro Barrage? There it is. This is going to sting on this Gallade. Let's see how much it does. And it God. does its whole health. Okay, blessing and a curse at the same time here. This means that Brantley does get to bring Torkoal back in for free. But now, no matter what he chooses, he has to lock into the to the move that he's going to use for the rest of this game as of this moment here. And I'm trying to take a look and see, is there anything that could be on the pocket here of Justin that could just uh, wall out Brantley in this scenario? But it doesn't look wow. like a pure wall. So here comes the helping hand. Uh, Where is this going to go? Which move did he select? The protect again coming out here from Justin though. 
Yeah, this could be very risky here. I would have... Oh. Justin could have swapped out the Pelipper to ensure the sun doesn't come out once again, but no, the eruption comes out. Will it take out this Pelipper? And it just barely does not! Oh, they would have needed that to get taken down, but of course, with that Focus Sash, this now j just tells Justin all of the information he needs. At this point here, Justin could literally just hit wide guard every single turn because Brantley cannot change his move. Locked into that spread damage. It's nice he got the cake here is that Trick Room is gone as well. So it means that Torkoal's life here is probably going to be short-lived. As here comes that Astro Barrage. Yeah, boosted by Grim Ney. That is going to be a one-shot KO for Brantley's Torkoal. And that means Justin is going to be taking this set 2-0. and oh. A fantastic battle from both players here. Justin, of course, going to take that W, but well fought on both ends. You can see exactly what they were doing. I loved what Justin was doing in regards to the positioning. Use every Pokemon that hit the field came out there with a a job with its intent and with its purpose and, and like just never felt like a dead draw of sorts here putting getting it to the point where he basically had Brantley into checkmate because he needed the damage from eruption but you had the tools to stop it there was no way you're getting out of that yeah that just goes to show that those years of experience to pay off but Brantley one of the best best even kept this competitive even with that disadvantage he still mm -hmm. fought very hard and fought very well and then personally, this is, I just love seeing this, where we have the, the newer generation, the younger players of the group um, coming in and competing here. The fact that like, they're as young as they are and still as competitive. Like I'd use the analogy, it's like being at, um, at a chessboard at a park. A kid walks up to you and it's like, oh, just a young kid, okay, I'll go easy. And then they absolutely wreck you. <laughs> yeah. I've had... Uh, pleasure playing up against Brantley myself and I got absolutely wiped. So it's just for both of these players here, just nothing but fantastic futures ahead of them. Good luck in their next matches as well, as well as where Worlds run when they do end up getting there. Yeah, exactly. Worlds is on the horizon for them, but what's on the horizon for us is our next game, which should be happening relatively soon. But before that happens, we're going to send it over to a really quick break. We'll be right back with the Swiss Rounds.